first off, have you done any live streams before the pandemic? Maybe like one. Yeah. <laughs> one two, maybe. yeah. Isn't it funny? Yeah. All the DJs were like, uh, I don't really know what I'm doing. OBS. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I mean, luckily, if you told me, like, could you imagine five, six years ago, like trying to stream something like that and, <laughs> and, and get interaction with people like, just like the back end on these websites are, are like so like done so well to make everything like so streamlined and easy like it, like you don't have to read a fucking user's manual for to set any of this up you know like anybody could stream anything now which is which is which is cool yeah it's yeah. Been, it's, yeah i know and it was like all of a sudden in march and april we're like all right well we got to figure this out we're all inside anyway i'd like to keep djing you know what i mean yeah, and you've yeah. so many cool ones though like you've done ferris wheel dirty bird desert hearts How's it been for you, I guess, like, kind of just getting, like, mentally? Are you kind of just, like, pretending you're by yourself? Or are you, like, thinking and playing to a crowd for someone who's such a great oh, I'm never by myself. I usually got Gene Ferris in the background fucking That's laughing true. at me. <laughs> <laughs> playing for Gene, then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they've, been, they've been really good. The, the first drive-in that I did this year was uh, for Lawrence for Lakeshore Drive-In uh, at the Planetarium. Yeah. That one was really good. Yeah. Um, I, and that was just that was just me, Paul Johnson, and Gene. Yeah, so and sick. One. And it, it went really well. They sold the the lot was filled, which was su surprisingly because they they had a, it, ours was like a last minute thing. I think they had a big artist canceled for like it was on a Wednesday. I'm pretty sure it was on a Wednesday, and yep. uh, it, they didn't get a fly, they didn't get a flyer up until like Tuesday night the week before. So like a week of promotion for that when for us to fill it up was was really sick. Chicago showed out, man. I mean, yeah. you don't need it, but that's a stamp of approval for, like, a Chicago legend, man. Like, to be on the lineup, to know those guys have a personal relationship with yeah. Paul and Dean, and it's like, all right, Steve's going to play his fucking music. This is the best of the best. Chicago showed out, man. And Paul Johnson gave me an, uh, he, uh, he had given me an edible that night. <laughs> he uh, loves smoking weed. Was, man, it was, it was a, it was a fucking, it was a gummy, too. And I, w I was drunk as shit that night, so I didn't eat it. I was smart enough then, but I ate it the next day, and I don't think I moved from my couch for about 16 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that guy is a fucking legend, and he loves smoking weed. I, I, I respect him. Gene, too. Those guys, man, they, they, can, they can just smoke you under the table. Can you, can you hold yourself? And I, I could hold my own with them, but, I mean, I mean <laughs> he, PJ will still smoke Gene under the fucking rug. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking awesome man tell me more about the lsd because i know lawrence from soundbar who you have great relationship with where you hold tell about LSD. okay strap in <laughs> yeah. this is actually joe rogan yeah. <laughs> how did so, you come uh, up with this? what was the process like because it was it was pretty incredible to see Lake, honestly uh lakeshore drive-in was uh i'm not sure who the other partners were i know they had a, a, another talent buyer that was involved but Lawrence was kind of the meat and potatoes behind like running, like running that drive in and overseeing it and like getting offers out and using his connections as talent buyer and uh, manager for from sound with like taking some of the artists that we had holds on and offers out for for like uh, the end of the year for sound and then like tell, like touching base with their agents like, hey, we could still do these dates, but it's going to be a drive in outdoor thing, you know, so right. I think. Lawrence was in definitely instrumental on making that happen, for sure. That's massive, man. Why do you think those are so important, not only just in Chicago, but nationwide? I mean, give the people something, right? Uh, I mean, not only that, but it's, I mean, even the artists are, like, the artists aren't taking full fees for, for yeah. the shit either. Because they know, one, they got bills, and they'll take something right now. Number yep. two, they want to get out of the house just as much as everybody else. <laughs> yep. And three, I mean, it's... I mean, I don't know. It also, for one, I think the most important thing in those drive-ins, too, since people can't play clubs right now, is they're able to, like, flex all this new music and shit that they've been yeah. working on, like, for... I mean, because, what, the first drive-ins didn't happen until, like, four months after, like, the initial heavy quarantine first started. So people were cooped up for several months before these even started. So everybody was already fucking ants in the pants. Yes. So, so I mean, every, every drive-in I went that I've played has, has been awesome. Yeah. 
a lot of energy. You you did. I mean, you did them all, man. You did, of course, Gene Ferris, Paul Johnson, you Derek Carter, Green Velvet. I actually saw you up at the Wax Motif and Walker and Royce show. Like it's just it's cool because you were there around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually I actually saw you playing, dude, and I didn't know that we're wasn't going to go through main PAs. That was that was the only drive-in I did this year that didn't have sound. Luckily, I had monitors on yeah, stage. Yeah, I, I was listening to your monitors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I just ca- I just had that shit cranked up and just wore my headphones all the time. Yeah, and then like when I was when I was done, like I walked through all the crowds and like so many of the cars weren't even like fucking wanging at all. Like they they had their volumes down to like ten, and I was like, what the fuck are y'all doing? Open your doors up. Dude, and put shit up at 30. Like, let's go, you know? <laughs> we had a tech house tailgate, luckily. We had we had a speaker, and uh, we fucking were just crushing beers. It was a great time. That was actually the only one I could go to. But what I was going to say is it's so cool to actually see, like, it's like a culture within a culture. Like, there are still, like, ravers there. There are still people who love the music. And it's just awesome to see, like, a lot of people thought that this industry, and certainly some of it is, like, drug-infused, right? Like, people are doing it because they like to get fucked up. But there's still so many people that are doing it and going to these things and driving out to McHenry, Illinois. You know what yeah, I mean? That was not a fun drive. <laughs> it was a far drive, but we got some I golf. drove all that way to play for 30 minutes. <laughs> Did I want to get out of the house? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just so cool to see like our culture thriving with these live streams, with these drive-ins. Like It's mm-hmm. not going to die. And that's what I meant earlier, you know, like the industry. I don't, I don't, I don't think I don't think streaming is going to die at all. If anything, I think it's only going to keep growing, especially when clubs are around, like clubs start to open back up gradually. If I had to, if I had to make an educated guess, I would I would say we will start seeing venues reopen around probably the April mark, like first week of April. Yep. Last week of March is when things are going to start, you know, like gradually the wheels will start spinning again. But yeah, I mean, shit. You like you played at Spy Bar once. We we got a little taste, and then it just got pulled away, which made it so much yeah, worse. Yeah, I I I totally forgot about that. Yeah, the first they yeah the first night that they were legally allowed to open, that I think they only opened for three nights total. Like yeah, it doesn't make sense. Night, next night, and then like one day the next weekend, and then it then the city pulled the plug on that again. 